Right, hello everyone. How's it going? Good, thank you. Good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm the MIG learning lecturer for 2015 semester one. Um, and that's Chris, who is the higher up, and we've got the lower people because he's the challenger and I'm not. All right, so who am I? Will in solo queue, reflections before solo queue, uh, the tips during the game. Uh, five, patch 5.7 mid lane champions, uh, runes and masteries, early mid late game strategies and questions are the outlines of what I'll be talking about. So my in-game name is Krevin, just an R between the K and the E, and my solo queue rank is plat 3. My favourite lane is mid, and my favourite champion of players are Nivea, Cass, Oriana, Zareth and Vladimir. Alright, so I'm just going to ask you like a quick question. like. What are the main things that you need to do to win solo queue, just in general? What? Yep. Not the least trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Nathan? <laughs> Don't die. Don't die? Yeah, that's like a top lane strat. Okay. So, this is pretty much the same as what I wrote last year is game knowledge, decision making, and mechanics. So, for the game knowledge, is yeah, like pros and cons, abilities, uh, damage output, knowing some of the cooldowns, etc. And as well as the meta for the latest patch. And for the decision making, it's just pretty much knowing what you, your team should be doing throughout the entire game in order to have the highest chance of victory. Um, like shot calling and just pretty much just communication as well. And for mechanics, is yeah, pretty much having the physical skill to execute the play. Uh, like mouse position, speed, bottom mashing, and knowledge of techniques will help you out. And unfortunately for mechanics, you can only improve by playing the game a lot. And a decent amount in keyboard helps. So what makes a good mid laner? So by applying three important skills as mentioned previously, you are able to dominate your lane, snowball other lanes, help your team get fed, know where your opponents are by being able to ward without getting caught, Wave control, objective control, and pretty much good uh, mid laners don't throw games. So like when you're 3-0 in your lane, just don't dive and give them the shutdown gold unless you could score a double kill or pill for your team. Hey guys. All right, so this is pretty much my reflections before solo queue. Um, it's something that I always just think about before actually pressing like the solo queue button, like start to play. So pretty much just don't be toxic in game. Um, you can be toxic and you can yell at the screen or whatever, but just don't waste time blaming other people in game because it just doesn't make it any better. And uh, pick order first. So obviously when you go in solo queue, uh, mid and jungle are the highest priority of picks of carrying the game. Well, obviously every lane has this pros and cons, but obviously mid is one of the most popular, um, popular lane for carrying the game, early game. So if you ask for mid and can't play it because someone else is first pick, tough luck. So don't force teammates to play a champion they don't know how to play. So just because you play someone like Orianna, you can't just force someone to play like, oh, play Sion or Jarvan or whatever if they never played it before. Because sooner or later, if they don't know how to play that champion, They'll probably end up feeding it and, like, and they'll probably just rage quit or go AFK. So uh, be able to play at least two champions every role. So not everyone can play mid every game. So just like one of the good tips if you're new to mid is just go into a custom game and practice last hitting on the tower and not on the tower. Um, it's like say if you play someone like Anivia, her base attack damage is really low. So even if it's two melee tower hits and one all attack on it, it's not going to kill it. So it's just something that you need to look, um, just keep trying to see your, like your rhythm. So know your play style, um, aggressive or passive or both. Always take flash and either ignite, heal barrier or ghost or like I'll mention it later on. Think about counter picks. So poking champs are weak against gap closers. Gap closers are weak against champs with high AOE and high AOE are uh, weak against poke champs. So just think of Caesar's Paper Rock. So some of the tips during game uh, for when I'm playing solo queue is 
if you know your enemy is going to recall, just let your team know as well. Like I know like most of the people just like recall and don't say anything. But sometimes people just don't have the time to look at what mid lane's doing, what bot lane's doing, etc. So just tell them that you're going to be to let your team know that you know the enemy is MIA. So just push your wave and use this opportunity to gank other lanes as well. And also let your team know that you're recalling. If the enemy team is missing, call MIA if you can't follow them. Know your enemy cooldowns. If you know their flash is down, ask your jungler for a gank. And also tell your jungler where it's watered in mid if possible. So one of the biggest synergy in like solo queue is the jungler mid or jungler top or jungler bot lane is if you don't tell them where it's watered and they just sit in that brush, it's just going to waste a lot of time because they obviously they can see you and they're going to either do a counter gank or they're just going to play safe. And take advantage of surprise attacks and fog of war. So this is one of the biggest things that a lot of the play, um, a lot of the players can't really do is when you're playing mid, like when you're playing an assassin champ, sometimes just waiting in brush is the best way to gank someone. Okay, so this is my opinion. It's not something that is definitely right, but what I do is I buy a red trinket early, um, around the time when your support buys a sidestone to clear out enemy yellow trinket. So the reason why I do this is because obviously yellow trinket doesn't get rid of the enemy yellow trinket. So if you just buy the sight wards and buy the red trinket, you can get rid of their wards. So it means that you have more vision around dragon area. And alternatively, you can upgrade into a greater yellow trinket and buy vision wards. So that's another way you could look at. All right, so these are the summoner spells that um, obviously everyone knows, you know, what those summoner spells are, so I didn't really put in depth for that. So Ignite, Ghost, Teleport, uh, Barrier and Heal are the main secondary summoner spells that you're looking at, and obviously you should always have Flash. So with Ignite, obviously it's, you can secure kills. Exhaust is more like a counterplay or you're versing in an AD lane, so like say if you're playing like Orianna or something, and you're versing a Zed, um, I think Exhaust would be a lot better than Ignite. And for teleport, I probably recommend it if you're versing someone like Twisted Fate, because obviously he has like roam potential, and you just need to make counter plays, and obviously he's gonna be able to teleport there. Um, Ghost, so right, I'll, I'll tell you later what the uh, why Ghost is really good right now is because there's a lot of champions. It's like this is a tank meta at the moment for patch 5.7, and obviously to be able to run away from tanks, you need movement speed. So if you're playing someone like AP Cogmore, like Ghost is the way to go. And Barrier and Heal is pretty debatable. So I mean, if you're playing like Xerath, you can, yeah, I mean, like Heal Barrier would be the best way to go because obviously um, Xerath is very long range and Ignite is like very short range. So there's no point of having Ignite. Right, Runes and Masteries. So, oh, so. Okay, so I just couldn't be bothered putting everything into the slide. So this is what I use uh, most of the time. Um, so it's just flat MR, health at level 18, magic pen, and ability power. And when you're versing someone like Zed, then you just get armor early on and ability power at level 18, because obviously Zed doesn't really have um, magic damage. And say if you're versing like a really safe lane, you can build um, health at level 18 and ability power level 18, um, but it can be a bit risky early game. And this is what I use with Orianna or Fizz, but obviously like Fizz is sort of out of pick in mid lane now. So the magic and the armor pen is something that you could look at for auto attacks. Uh, and forget about the movement speed, you can just change, replace that with um, ability power and that one as well. So that one's just replacing armor, and yeah, just change those two around. Okay, oh, oops. Okay, so for the masteries, um, I don't really take much into consideration, because of like later on, it's not gonna really matter, but it's more about the early game. So this is the one I mainly use. Um, it's just a standard one, like four, three, one, three, and yeah, I don't know, yeah, it's just, 
2109 is the best way to say it. And the, be the biggest debate would be uh, the fleet of foot, which gives movement speed or meditation with mana regen per five seconds. Um, I like getting movement speed because it's something that you can, if, you're, if you do have 1.5% movement speed faster than enemy mid lane, or sometimes you can like dodge spells or make a counterplay or even run away. But I don't really take much into consideration for that. Uh, oops. Okay. Okay. So the patch 5.7 mid lane champions is done. All right. So obviously, um, AP Cogmore, Choga, um, like Ariana, Cassiopeia, like all those champions right now are pretty much like tank shredders in this meta. So obviously, in top lane, there's um, like Shivana with the Cinder Hulk build, goes like full tank, Scion as well, um, Hecarim, like anyone with like really high like base health and de um, defense. Yeah, like that's why um, nowadays you don't really see that many Katarinas or it's either banned or so on. So um, yeah, so pretty much got the hang of the chance in patch 5.7. So what now? You can practice them in the normal games. Um, you can learn and main at least two mid lane champions after watching that video. So one AP and one AD. So the two easy champions I'd probably stick to are Annie and Talon. Um, but yeah, so the AD mid laners, Zed and Yasuo, are harder mechanically. So just try not play these champions in ranked if you're inexperienced. And practice last hitting. So every champion has different base attack damage and it's just really important to know the rhythm. And every champion has a power spike as well. So like most of them are at level six and you just use this advantage to uh, secure kills and play passive. So like if it's someone like Cassiopeia, her, her power spike is at level two. So you just max out your Q and your E and you can start poking them down. And starter items and itemization against enemy comp. So when it comes to itemizations, I didn't really explain much in this slide, but I did just point out the starter items. So the one on the left is pretty much the AP mid laners, and the one on the right is the right, uh, so AD mid laners. So obviously, um, if when you're playing someone like Zed, the standard build everyone goes is longsword and three pots. But if you think that um, that like you'll be doing fine, then you can just get a Durant's Blade and a Pot. And for the AP, most of the standard build is Durant's, and, uh, Durant's Ring and two pots. Um, whereas if I play someone like Vladimir, I get Boots and four pots. Or unless if I'm versing someone like Zed, I get um, Cloth Armor and five pots. And if I'm playing Kassadin, I get the Flask, because Kassadin is a melee champion, and he's bound to get poked a lot. So, just CSing techniques. So, this is something um, what differentiates between a bronze player and a diamond player. And as you improve, your CSing will improve as well. So, I'm just going to point out some of the techniques that I, I found when I was playing solo queue. So, there's three ways of um, last hitting minions. So, using auto attacks. So, it's the hardest, but it's the most rewarding farming technique because as it uses zero mana, it gives you mana sustain over time. So when you have more mana than your opponent, you can actually poke them and have more ma mana for an all-in if you decide to. So if I see someone like, uh, say someone like Swain, that with like no mana, and I have like, say 400 health left with Orianna, I would go all-in, because I, I know that Swain had no mana, because he wouldn't be able to fight back. So some, some of the decision makings that you can just have a look at if you think they have no matter, are you able to trade, and so on. So the main tip from me is just get used to how much damage your creeps do to enemy creeps, and get used to the damage that you do to each different creep. So you do more damage to ranged caster creep because they have less armor um, than the melee ones. So then time your auto attacks correctly to hit and kill the minion just before it's about to die. All right, so this is someone like Oriana. So she has a really high, high base attack, or not base attack damage, but her passive allows her to uh, land really strong auto attacks. So the difficulty is just depending on what champ that you are using, because it pushes your lane much faster than just using auto attacks. 
So use some of your mana, but it'll also enable you to get more and faster CS. So if I was playing someone like Anivia, you can actually use in, like your spells to clear the entire wave. Or if you really don't want it to push, just use uh, just press R and then get it, all the minions low, and then last hit each one of them. And obviously you have to time it correctly or else your creeps will kill the low health creeps. So one of the standard um, expectations in mid lane is 100 CS in 10 minutes or 12 minutes. If you can't do that, that's okay. Um, because obviously some, some champions are really hard to farm with. So using abilities, um, most of the time it's mid to late game when you have enough mana and your champ already has good mana sustain. So push wave, give easy and quick CS, and just be careful of overextending and ward your side lanes. So that is the biggest mistake that people have when they're playing mid, is they, get, they overextend after pushing the mid lane tower. So just use a combo of abilities to kill minions either all at once or in groups. So this is the early game strategy that I do um, every time I play against like a really hard champion or just know like which champions that you, you know, look at. Say if you're playing Cassiopeia, I would definitely take advantage of the early game rather than mid to late game. So yeah, I just pretty much explained all that. So 16 CS is equivalent to one kill. So meaning you can be down three kills, but still be ahead in gold if you are at least 48 CS ahead. And if you have a champion relatively low cost abilities, then you can occasionally poke your lane opponent. So someone like Zareth, um, his passive gets, gets his mana back on his next auto attack. And if you manage to land an auto attack to an enemy champion, you get triple the amount. So that's something that you can look at. So, yeah, it means that you'll walk away from the little awkward shuffle with less health loss than your opponent. And if you have a champ capable of doing a lot of damage pre-6, like LeBlanc or Nivea, just go ahead and all in the enemy if you know you can kill them. So mid-game is when uh, the power spikes come in. So there's three distinct directions that your lane will go. It's either when you're dominating your lane, um, your lane is tired or when you're losing your lane. So when you're dominating your lane, obviously um, you can start roaming, push a tower, and you have more room to just think what you should do to get your other lanes to snowball. Whereas if your lane is tired, obviously you know both lanes will be farming evenly and whoever just wins the 1v1 will start snowballing. So if you really want to change that tide around, ask your jungler for a gank. And if you can then poke down your opponent before going in, giving you a better chance of being victorious if his health starts out lower than yours. And if you're losing your lane and you have trouble killing your opponent, try, what you can do is you can push a wave and recall so that you have an item advantage. So if you're versing someone like LeBlanc, so like obviously LeBlanc, she has a really high kill potential against any mid laners out there. Uh, it's because of her burst. And she has the ability to um, starve the enemy from farming. So if the enemy comes in and just even land one auto attack, she'll just go QWER and like all these crazy spells and just get you from 100 to 0. So uh, while you're waiting for him to gank, just what you do is just play safe, get as much CS as possible without losing a lot of health. Um, try building to counter their champs. So if you're playing someone like Orianna, or Katarina, for example, and you're versing a LeBlanc, you can build MR first before AP. So like Chalice of Harmony would be the best way to go, or um, Negatron's Cloak. All right, so late game is the funnest part for mid. It's basically around level 12 to 14, laning phase should be over, or almost over. So it pretty much means that both teams will start to stray away from the lanes and focus more on objectives. So in team fights and sieging, Three main types of mid lane fighting strategies are shown. So assassins, um, like Zed, Talon, like all the AD, AD assassins, um, LeBlanc, Akali, um, yeah, I think pretty much those champions. Uh, they're obviously mostly single target, so they're good at taking out one opponent. So in champion select, if you if you know like what if you're last pick and you get to go mid, just have a think about what champions they're playing. So like look at the top lane, look at the jungler, AD carry, and support, 
and see what they focus on. So say if it's like a Leona, Oriana in their team, obviously they are more reliant on te um, team fights. So, so that means like maybe assassins could be an okay choice, depending if they're going to get caught. Um, AOE burst. So Oriana, Vladimir, Anivia, um, like Amumu, like all the AOE champions. So they have really high damage in team fights, but they just have really long cooldowns. So they do a lot of damage to multiple enemies, and they do a good amount of CC. So just stick around the rest of the teams that have range abilities, and just go in when the rest of your team engage. So like, if you see a Gragas go in, you just shoot, I'd say if you're playing Orianna, you just shoot Gragas and just ult. And most of the time, it sort of works, but depending on what champion they're playing. So for poking, um, like Sarath, um, Nidalee, yeah, pretty much those poking champions, um, they obviously they poke for a reason, is if they get caught, they are likely to die. Um, the, your role will be similar to an AD carry, you just stay behind with your allies and dish out as much damage as possible. So the goal of poke champions is to get enemy team low before engage, so they are easy to kill. So when you're poking, it's pretty much sieging. So obviously in patch 5.7, um, the secondary tower, you get like that temporary shield. So poking is something um, you just need to be a little bit more careful nowadays because you can get caught and like if you have a Scion um, just charging at you, you're going to end up getting caught. So in my opinion, I think poke champions are the hardest to play in this meta. So common scenarios in solo queue. So I'm being dived, what do I do? Anyone? Yeah. Yeah. Spencer? What would, you, what would you do if you're being dived? <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Elaborate a bit more. Okay, so. Keep calm. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the best answer. <laughs> Alright, so getting panicky just makes you mess up, and that just usually means the enemy team gets a kill. Uh, know your enemy's abilities. Are they on cooldown? If so, when will they be up? Do they have enough damage to kill you? Do they have ignite or flash up? Knowing these things will help you predict a dive so you'll be prepared when one does occur. Know your own abilities. Do you have any abilities to help turn the dive in your favor? If they're on cooldown and they're silently trying to dive you, try your best to pull a faker juke or until they're up. And even flash away if necessary. And also just try to bait them as well. So like what you can do is just let your jungler know, oh, okay, so I think I'm going to get dive. just stay behind me. So when they do dive, you can see a Lee Sin just dob you out of nowhere and just kick them out or just, juke, just counteract. All right, so the second scenario is my opponent health uh, is low health under their tower. What do I do? So know both in you, you and your abilities, abil uh, enemy's abilities. So this can help you know if you can secure the kill or not. Try and wait when their CC or escape move is on cooldown for best results. So obviously never dive a Cassidy, even though he only has like one bar of health left. Is it can t they can he can turn it around. And just try and predict the enemy's movements. So if you were to be dived and you were playing the champ, what would you do? And if your opponent have any patterns that you, they usually repeat when you try and go in, what you can do is just. Find out their rhythm and try to strategize and find a way to counter gank. And you can somehow like dodge their CC as well. Um, create vision before diving. And try not get too greedy because when, when you're already ahead in lane, you don't really need any more kills. It just takes one shutdown, for your, uh, one shutdown gold for your lane opponent to come back into the game. So it's just better to play it safe. So one of the things that I like to look at when I'm playing mid is if you die more than three times, it's not a good thing. Like, you, it's, yeah, you get your t opponent to come back into the game. All right, so look for opportunities to gank other lanes. So if they see you go bot through bush and start following you, what you can do is just wait in the bush and gank him back. So like, if I went around the tri, if I was on the purple side and I was in the tri near the race area and I go bot, and obviously they're going to call me on and they'll probably 
try to follow up, what you can do is just stay in the bush, and then when they go into the bush, just turn it around. All right, thanks for coming to the mid lane lecture. So QT Social is at 5.30, I think it is, so 30 minutes from now. And if there's any questions, just let me know now, or add my name, or Facebook message me. When I play mid lane, yeah. Okay. <coughs> okay. Which, which champion do you play? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, when you're playing like Hyperdinger, I'd probably just say stay in mid and don't even move. Don't just, move. just keep, just keep pushing. Yeah. Just keep pushing. Huh? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Any other questions? What if I'm actually getting camped by Final 7? So, see the jump and stay in mid. Who? What if I'm just getting camped like really hard? If you're, ca if you're getting camped, so like, do, uh, which champion do you play in mid? Like, first lane. Ergot. Okay, so if it's someone like Ergot, obviously. Um, he has like, you just have to, if you're being, like, if you're being camped, I'll probably just stay behind the caster minions. Um, that's the range of like, when they try gank you, they're not going to catch you. <laughs> so like, where do you normally ward? Like, where do you normally ward? Side, yeah. Yeah, do you know the um, isolated brush near dragon? That's a good place to ward because it covers vision in um, the banana bush, the race, and the dragons. So, like, uh, w like which champion do you normally play, and like which jungler would would you not like being camped? So, like, Shaco, for example. Volibear. Sorry. Volibear. Volibear. Yeah, Volibear is yeah okay. So Volibear is like really strong right now. Um, if what I would do if I was playing. Uh, like, say if I was playing Orianna, like, I had a solo queue game today, and pretty much Volibear was camping my lane. What I did was j I just pushed away, ward the side lanes, and just recall, and then come back, and just rush boots. Because some of the things that you can just watch out is Volibear is obviously really fast, so, like, movement speed over damage is just to try to flip the fight around. And ask your jungler for a gank, so, say if it's a Volibear and you have a Gragas in your team, Wait for the Gragas to just stay in the fog of war area. And so when Volibear comes in, I think Gragas can come in as well and it becomes a 2v2 fight. Yeah. It still depends on your opponent, your lane opponent. Sorry? If they have the better 2v2, you can pretty much still fight it, right? Yeah, you can. Like, if you think. It just depends. So, like, if you're playing. Uh, if you're bursting a Volibear and say they're playing someone like. Like Lysandra, it's like a really high kill potential. I'll probably just play safe, wait for their jungle to go back to their jungle, then your jungler can go back to their jungle. They yeah, just stay yeah, most of the time you just stay mid. Um, just try not, like, if your minion's pushed, right, try not roam. Just push your wave out and then roam. Because obviously the minions will give vision to the direction that you're going to. Yeah. Okay, yep. Ah, uh, what do you mean? Like, do you reckon he's good in Azir? Who? Azir. Azir. Um, <clears throat> good question. So, I don't know what... Did, do you know if he got buffed or nerfed to 4 or 5.7? He didn't... There was no change to him, hey. Yeah, so like any champions that are poking these days, um, it's a bit out of the meta. Because Azir has a lot of damage and he pokes pretty well. But he can, he has really low mobility, except for like one gap close. Like he can get caught pretty well if his ult is down, um, and because he doesn't have a stun and he doesn't really have like a slow unless you like once you start getting W Q and E, that's when you start slowing. Um, in this meta, I don't think he's the flavor of the month because there's so many other champions. Like if you're playing Cho'Gath, 
Azir could be a good pick because you can just constantly poke him. But right now in patch 5.7, like sustain and burst is the way to go. Yeah. So it doesn't mean he's not viable. It just means there's a lot of like other champions that are better. Yeah. Yeah. What was Victor? Are they still viable in this match? Um, Victor got. I think Victor got nerfed this match. Um, he. I think he's because obviously there was this one person from Korean LCS that started playing. His name's Coco, and he's. I think he's still pretty strong, but he's like another Azzy as well. Like he's bound to get caught. Um, there's a lot of like better AP mid champions out there, like Cho'Gath, for example. Like Cho'Gath just destroys everyone right now, and um, sustain is better than poke at the moment. <coughs> yeah, but in terms of team fight, though, I think yeah, Victor is definitely good at um, taking one opponent out. Yeah. So if the only times I would play Victor is if I'm versing someone like um, AD or Katarina or. Um, Anyone with like really low mobility, so like Mauzaha, for example, like some because like, you obviously have to land your lasers. Yeah. Yep. Who would you play against Cho'Gath? Um, if I was who I would play against Cho'Gath would be Zareth. So because Zareth can push lanes, um, and he's very far away, so he's not he's less likely to get hit by the ruptures. So it's just he because Cho'Gath is a single target, like he's pretty much an assassin. When he lands his rupture, he'll just flash feast and kill you. So I'd still consider him like an assassin um, whenever his rupture is up. But he also has a silence as well, so you can consider him a mage as well. Um, yeah. And what happened with AD Ezreal? A AD Ezreal? Yeah. Um, against Cho'Gath or just in general? Just in general. Hmm. I don't really play AD Ezreal much. Um, I think that he just doesn't have enough damage against a tanky meta. Um, the only time he'll start doing damage is when he gets Last Whisper and Frozen Gauntlet to be able to kite the tanks. So, if, like, obviously, like, Sion, Gragas, they all, like, they can dish out the squishy champ, like, AD champs these days. So, the AD carry and mid is really, like, not, at, at the moment, good compared to top lane and junglers. It's all because of that item, that Cinderhulk item. Um, and like, yeah, it's just pretty much just a tanky meta at the moment. So that's why Cho'Gath is really good. Um, AP Cogmore is really good against Cho as well, because he has percentage damage. Um, Vladimir, because of sustain. Uh, but obviously you're sacrificing a lot of crowd control for that. So if I was, if I was playing AD Ezreal, I wouldn't, pick, I wouldn't first pick him. I would only play AD Ezreal if I'm playing a really safe lane. And just like save, just farm like 200 CS at 20 minutes, and then just rush a frozen or like any AD item like Manu Mew, Frozen Gauntlet, Last Whisper, and just start poking. Okay.